Good morning, church. We have another treat for you this week, another testimony. Now, Gerard Long, who was dead for 30 minutes, came back from the dead, is a friend of Joe and Axel. So enough said from me. Watch the following video and you'll be blessed. See you on Sunday. Bye for now. It was October the 26th, 2019, when Gerard kissed me goodbye in the early hours of the morning. He was so excited to be invited to watch live coverage of England playing New Zealand in the semi-final of the Rugby World Cup. I distinctly remember as he was leaving, he said, we are in God's hands. His words seemed to hang in the air. Yes, I repeated, we are in God's hands. Yeah, so England had just about scored a try and I heard this noise just right behind my right ear of Gerard going into deep, stressed breathing. And I turned and looked at him. I thought he was having a, either an epileptic attack or a panic attack. And, uh, and whilst it seemed pretty severe, uh, I thank the Lord because I just felt a calmness and put my hands on him and prayed for him. And then it all sort of kicked into motion. And then we got up and we started calling 911 uh, and uh, Adam and Joel got Gerard on, on the floor and, and it sort of all happened from there. But it's an incredible experience to see a man who just a few minutes before was enjoying you know, a game of rugby with, with us, who was now basically dead. Although none of us knew what to do, I suddenly had these thoughts that looking back, I know God must have given me. I felt strongly that we should take Gerard, get him to the ground and start doing CPR. My mom um, was a nurse, so we, we thought it would be smart to just wake her up and, and bring her downstairs to see um, if she could help with anything. And um, immediately she came down, felt his pulse, um, and basically pronounced him dead um, on the spot. So as my mom pronounced him dead, um, I just couldn't accept that um, he was dead and uh, shouted basically right in his face, you know, Gerard, no. The emergency team uh, then arrived and started to work on Gerard. After 30 minutes dead, uh, they shocked him several times and miraculously found a heartbeat. When I saw Gerard in the ICU, I could hardly breathe. He had wires and tubes all over him. I thank my friends with all my heart who had been so kind to look after him and pray through the night, comforting me as I wept. The doctor told us to go home because Gerard was in a coma and said they would call me within the next 24 hours. Rosie and Derek dropped me home. I fell on my knees and I cried out to God, I need a miracle. Well, shortly after that, the, um, the ICU doctor phoned me and said that I needed to get back because unusually, Gerard had woken up and was um, causing all sorts of trouble with um, the wires. Uh, he was pulling the wires out and he was, um, had this anxiousness about that he had to get on. waiting for the results of the MRI um, for, for Gerard's brain. Our prayers interrupted us when a doctor burst through the doors shouting, it's a miracle, he doesn't have any brain damage. The emergency team and the medics told me what had happened to Gerard was a miracle. I can't believe this happened to my healthy, very athletic husband 
and I hardly have words to express how grateful I am to God. But in his loving mercy, he gave me back my Gerard. I am so grateful and so humbled by all the love and care that our dear friends, uh, the first responders and the medics gave, gave us on that fateful night and over the last 12 months. I thank Jeannie with all my heart for her love and care, but most of all I want to thank God that uh, he gave me more time on earth. As you might imagine, my big question is why? Why am I still here? I believe with all my heart that God has given me a message for those who are suffering. And we know that many people are suffering today, particularly because of COVID-19. Some people are grieving, some people are lonely, some people are depressed and some people have lost all hope. I've recently written a book called Living Hope and I pray that through that you will find faith and peace and purpose in the tough times.